having the worst luck tonight. Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you guys joining the doctor. And today, guys, I wanted to talk about some maintenance for our three degree of freedom motion simulator platform because we really do need to keep an eye on things and just a little bit of basic maintenance every now and then to try and keep our rig healthy and uh, to get the best longevity out of our rig that we possibly can. So one thing I've done uh, today is I went around and I just nipped up all of the motor mount bolts. So all of these guys, okay, on all my motors, traction loss motor and these two motors, they're all pretty good, but you know, they're under a fair bit of pressure um, on our timber mounts there. So I just nip them up a little bit, just torque them up a little bit. I'll probably do that from time to time. Um, and it really depends, I suppose, on how much the rig's getting used and you know how much voltage you're putting into the motors and how much movement you're getting in the rig. Now, the other thing I think that is very important to do, guys, is we just need to keep an eye on our tie rod ends here, okay? So what I use, I'm just using uh, some silicon spray lubricant for my ball, for, for the balls, okay? On the inside of the tie rods. Just a bit of silicon spray. It's a little bit cleaner than an oil. Doesn't pick up the dirt, etc. quite as much. So I prefer to use that, but it's still a very good lubricant. And I'll just do that from time to time. They're um, points that do get hot, obviously, um, in the rig's motion. The rear traction loss, not quite as uh, not quite as critical on that one because it's really just a push pull set up on that one. So um, I put a little bit of lubrication on those tie rods as well because you know while you're doing it you might as well throw a bit in those ones as well but not as critical. The other thing I did today which I've which I've been wanting to do for a little while is on my uh, Fanatec V3 pedals I stiffened my brakes. I added some different uh, bushings inside uh, the brake assembly there. I actually forked out for the performance kit that you can buy for these and I've put a couple of the harder bushings in and I set my preload a little bit harder for a much tighter brake and I adjusted the software too to about 35% on the brake. I'm much happier with that. Um, it's much better for the heel and toe. Um, I don't tend to lock up the brakes in the car as much now when I'm trying to heel and toe and I also put the stiffer spring on the accelerator pedal so then there's more resistance um, with accelerating. It needs more in my opinion and I think I might look at possibly purchasing the dampener kit. I'm happy with the clutch, I didn't fiddle with that at all. The spring on the clutch is fine. Brakes just needed to be stiffened and definitely that throttle spring needed to go with the harder spring. Now the other thing too guys, depending on your uni joint, now my uni joint on this guy has a grease nipple, given that it's off a tractor PDO shaft. Most rear tail shaft vehicle uni bearings will have a grease nipple, though some are a sealed bearing and you can't do anything with them. If that's the case and that's what you're using, then you don't need to stress about that. So really, guys, that's about it. We just need to keep an eye on the rig as we're using it. Um, as I'm sort of, you know, experimenting with the rig over time, pushing it more to its limit, um, we just need to keep an eye on um, some areas of the rig as well. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure here where our tie rods and our push rods from our motor levers to our frame are there's, there's quite a bit of pressure on our frame here now you know i have been welding for a long time so my welds um on the connecting cross pieces here from our um, laterals you know i got very good penetration on those i got you know we did our due diligence there guys we made sure we put a chamfer but i may at some point uh, put some cross bracing in here on both sides might even put it further. Um, I don't know. I'm going to see how that goes. I'm just going to keep an eye on things. At the moment, because we've got a two and a half mil thick box that are our main laterals running to the front, there's a bit of flex in the rig. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because that takes a little bit of pressure off our motors when we're really, um, if, we're, if, we're, if we're crashing or something like that in our game, and you've seen that a few times, guys, in the videos, how, how violent the rig can get. I think it's good to have a little bit of flex in the rig. So it just takes that pressure 
off our motors and off the gearboxes in the motors, it's not a bad thing. Now, the other thing I wanted to share with you too was the Audrino and the USB connection. So I think I mentioned in one of my other videos that I was running this powered USB hub. I was running my Fanatec, my handbrake, etc., into the USB hub, and I was running USB from the Audrino that you know um, runs our, you know, that communicates with sim tools in our games. It was running out of my computer. I was getting a lot of USB dropout that way. Suddenly, my motors would just stop working. They'd sag. The left one would do it. The right one would do it. Then. After about 20 seconds, they'd come back to life and the rig would reset itself. That has stopped happening since I took all the peripherals out of the USB hub and now I'm running them out of the computer. So the Fanatec um, and, and my handbrake and my button box, they all now run straight out of the computer, USBs or USB 2. And I run solely now the Adreno in the powered USB hub. I think what the issue is, is when you think about it, you know, your potentiometers, they need to draw 5 volt. The IBT2s need to draw 5 volt. And I think I was having voltage drops by running the Audrino because it powers the IBT2s and it also powers the potentiometers. And I think uh, it was having voltage drops and I was losing power to my potentiometers and to my IBT2s when I was running the Adreno out of the computer. Now that I'm running the Adreno solely out of that USB hub, and it's such a waste. I mean, there's 10 ports on that USB hub. But when I was running the other peripherals in the USB hub and I was running the Adreno in the USB hub, I would, I would get my Fanatec dropping out sometimes. I was getting all sorts of weird issues. So it's a bit of an over-glorified power pack, really, for the Adreno. But look, it only cost me like 25 bucks or something. It was because it's USB 2, and um, it was basically discontinued through JCAR, our uh, tech shop here in Australia, it was $24. If it means I've got a constant powered uh, USB that goes to my Arduino, that keeps my rig voltages all consistent, and I don't have any more dropouts, it's the best money that I've ever spent. So that's something that I would uh, give you guys a heads up on, when you come to uh, running your Adreno via USB, I would think seriously about a USB hub that's powered, has its own five volt power, has a transformer powering that hub, so it's not relying on the rails off the motherboard. Okay guys, I'm going to do another video tonight driving around the Barawa Valley. I had a comment on my uh, YouTube channel in regards to the Barawa Valley circuit that I, I raced last night, that I, I cruised around with last night with the other Aussie muscle and, and some other mixed uh, classic muscle cars in that video. And yes, that is the Barawa Valley National Park loop. And I found that, as I said, I was just doing a search for long Assetto Corsa maps, like hill climb maps. That's the sort of stuff I'm really into. And I just happened to find that, like I said, it was on a bit of a random website. I don't think you can actually get it free. I think you have to pay for it normally. I think it's a patron um, released work. So yeah, if you want to get that, you would probably have to become a patron and purchase that that map. You would find that simply by doing uh, Barawa Valley National Park Circuit or something like that on Google. All right, guys, it's a quick overrun about ongoing maintenance uh, on the rig and what we need to keep our eye on. Uh, once you've got this built and you're starting to use it a lot, just a little, few little basic maintenance things that you do need to keep an eye on and just, you know, do every now and then. Every, probably every sort of, you know, four to five hours of use, check all your bolts, keep those um, tie rods, keep them lubricated in the balls and you shouldn't have too many issues if you uh, need to lubricate your uni joint every now and then. We're not talking about a uni joint that's now on a car, you know what I mean, going at X amount of RPM all the time and moving around lots and lots and lots. I mean, it is moving around a fair bit, but if you've got a uni joint that has a um, grease nipple, then perhaps you need to think about um, giving that some grease every now and then as well. Rightio, guys, let's get into some racing 
and uh, I'm going to showcase tonight a car that's very, very similar to my uh, car that I own, my muscle car. It's the year after mine. Body shape is pretty much identical. There's just a few little things that changed uh, with the grills and um, with some striping on the uh, Ford XYs. Mine is the previous model, an XW, 1969 XW. The 1970 XYs, they were the same body shapes, but um, they just had a, a bit of striping and a bit of um, grill changes. Some of the XWs had Windsors, some had Clevelands. Okay, uh, amongst other things, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna showcase driving an XY tonight, tuned XY, so no more Lamborghinis uh, leaving the doctor behind. The shoe is going to be on the other foot tonight, and those Lambos aren't going to know what has hit them. Enjoy, guys, and till next time, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there. So, guys, this is what I'm driving tonight around the Barawa Valley National Park circuit, and this is the model after my uh, Ford XW. This is the tuned version. I think Uncle M is responsible for the creation of these guys, and he's done a great job um, of... This and the physics are very close to how these feel. It's just awesome uh, being able to drive a car that you actually own or very close to what I own. In fact, I can drive XWs uh, if I want to in R Factor 2 and R Factor 1, and I do do that occasionally, but the XYs, look, it's basically like driving the same car. This is uh, a tuned car, not quite as much grunt as the doctor's. My car as dynoed at about 520 horsepower, 525.8 horsepower is what it dynoed at. That's uh, a modified motor, obviously. That's a stroked 351 Cleveland. It's The displacement's been changed to 393 cubic inches. As I was saying in my last video, I've also changed it over to a Holly Sniper fuel injection. It's got a uh, CDI multi-spark ignition, and it's got a quite a big cam it's not stupid big but it's reasonably big it's a reasonable cam in it uh running roller rockers it does get up and boogie so it's got a bit more grunt than this one in the game but um they do feel it feels remarkably similar uh driving this thing in game to what it uh feels like when i'm driving mine so anyway without further ado let's get the race happening at barawa I've got, uh, once again, a bunch of classics racing with me in this race. Hopefully, I'll stay on the road and won't end up in a ditch. <laughs> Though it is a constant challenge, racing AI. I just joined Discord today, actually, and I hopefully will actually get some online play happening. The main issue for me is I don't have internet where my motion rig is. This is why the doctor is not uh, doing any multiplayer action at the moment because I have no way of connecting to the internet out in my workshop. Hopefully that's going to change in the not too distant future. Let's drive. We'll go with some lights. Oh, you'll probably notice that I don't have a steering wheel set up actually on the playback, that's because I've taken that out. Because my field of view was set up so then basically I see my Fanatec steering wheel, just like I would in my car. So that's why you are seeing no steering wheel or gloves. job by the way on the sound of this. It sounds great. Oh there's one of those rotary. Man those it's a master capella rotary. Oh, 
My parents, when I were growing up, had the 323 variant of those guys, the same era. I think there was about a school. Whoa! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my gosh! Oh, that didn't go so well. Oh, back at the pits. Having a, uh, having a wheel and uh, fuel change. That's bloody annoying. Sorry about this, Pete. <coughs> Probably be handy if I didn't... Um... Uh, I shouldn't uh, throw the steering wheel around so much. I will try and get on it tonight uh, where I can so that you can really uh, see some traction loss. Let's give this 427 cubic inch Cobra a run, eh? Uh, there's one of the owls. There's an XA that I was driving last night. He's all over the show. Oh, very nice of him to move over. Now we'll go on a nice fifth gear there and conserve some fuel. Now will I make it past this part of the highway again? Started losing a little bit of traction there. What are we doing? 120 miles an hour. 180 miles an hour. On 140. I mean, that's getting up and booging in these old cars now. Oh. That car up ahead there on the left, that Mustang, that's what these chassis are based on. They're based on the Mustang. these V3 pedals since I gave them a bit of a tuner. The brakes are so much better now. I mean they weren't bad to start with. I, I, I have uh, mentioned that I was using Logitech Dodgy Tech G27 pedals before these so anything after that is obviously a bit of a, a step up but just adding that firmer spring on the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal as we call them in Australia and the firmer brakes has made this heel and toe much much easier without slamming the brakes on so hard
Oh, here's a nice pink GTR XU1 Tirana. Driving like a grandmother. I'm not going to go on about Holden drivers again tonight. It's not nice. I'm an appreciator of all muscle cars. to see the traction loss. Oh, I've got a challenger. tribute to a great man. What a driver. This is where that Mazda Capella last night went careering over the edge here. suspension etc. Pressured by the Holdens and uh, Chev committee there, so let's get this big forward. Oh, let's get moving, eh? <laughs> what you gotta watch is the fish tailing. Oh, what's going on here? This does not look promising. The computer says no. 
That is bizarre. Well, you saw it right here, uh, peeps, on the Doctor's channel. I don't know what's happened here. We have frozen completely. Maybe it's uh, trying to run OBS as well, I don't know. But we might just have to leave it there, guys, I'm afraid, which is a shame, because that was a lot of fun. But video's got to be long enough anyway. We guys, uh, we see you in the next video. I'm moving towards getting these flight sim peripherals uh, set up on the rig. Uh, in the next week or so, I'm just waiting on some rudder pedals. I'm trying to decide whether to do a DIY rudder pedal build or just buy some rudder pedals. I don't know. Uh, for what you can buy the damn things for, uh, off, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a cheap Chinese version that are very similar to the, uh, some of the high-end ones that, you know, it's about, I saw them for, for 200 bucks. 200 bucks. In China, and uh, it's pretty cheap, guys. Pretty hard to build them for that price. By the time you, uh, they're pretty well made. So I may end up just doing that and getting on with the flight sim peripheral build, so we can uh, get that done on the rig. So then anyone that's uh, wanting to do some flight sim stuff as well will be able to incorporate that into this rig. Guys, we'll see you next time. This is the doctor out.